Hey, what's good there? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, yes, it seems super long. However, it's a cool interview with one of my friends at MIT, Mokhtar Fall. Now, play me some of that. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, thank you, editor. All right, so this video is going to be about Mokhtar's experience in science when he was in high school. However, he has a super, super interesting story. So if you really have time right now, watch the whole interview. However, if you're just trying to find out the useful information for you, make sure to go below the description as I include the certain timestamps where he talks about certain topics. So without further ado, let's get started and enjoy the video. Also, make sure to comment, like, and subscribe as I want to hear your input to make these videos better and also bring more people who you are interested about. Thank you. My name is Mokhtar. Um, I'm a... Uh... Uh, rising junior like Carlos at MIT, uh, focusing on uh, urban studies and planning. Um, and I'm from New York to like, yeah, I'm from New York um, originally. And I like um, am in New York during this like quarantine. So yeah. what um high school did you go to in, in New York? I went to Success Academy High School of the Liberal Arts. Um, right. I was actually one of the, I was the founding class um and so it's like a new it's a new like high school uh recently opened in 2014 gotcha. um a part of a charter uh, a whole wide uh, a wide charter school system that extends throughout the five boroughs in new york i see and were you like in a specific program there or was it just like because yeah. here in florida you know you have like ib and stuff like that was it like that on uh, your school uh, or? no not really i think it uh, i was i was in the school from k through like 12 Gotcha. So I've been in that like system. So I guess that's like, it's not like a program, but I've, I've been in the school f for like that long. Um, and they didn't have IV or anything, but they started instituting APs and um, like things like that uh, near my, around my junior year. I was chilling. I, I didn't really start off with STEM. I, um, we just like, I guess we came into like the high school, just doing our regular like subjects rather than like focusing on like um, an engineering course or something like that. But I think it's changed um, when I, um, since I've left. Um, I know now they have some, like a STEM track and tracks mm -hmm. like that. But yeah, we were just, we were just in it for the ride, to be honest. I guess like near the end of my time, like they started to like go over, like towards like STEM tracks. Um, so like when I was growing up, I always wanted to be a cardiologist. Um, That's I just felt like it was a cool, like thing, like a cool yeah, title man. to have. And, like, <laughs> you're also like trying to like help the hearts of like millions of Americans and millions of people around the world. Um, yeah. But then I guess what really brought me into like mechanical engineering um, was this program over the summer um, at RPI, preface at RPI. Um, my, it was my rising sophomore, rising, no, rising junior, as a rising junior, I did this program and I was able to like, um, have hands-on experience with uh, like working in a, like a factory, well, not a factory, but like, uh, I forgot what the space is called. <laughs> it's been a while, but yeah, working with mills yeah. and working with, uh, band saws and 3d printers and kind of like uh, a maker space a maker space yeah oh maker i see space. Man, <laughs> so, good stuff, yeah man. i guess dude, that's like where i started to um like where all my uh, stem like desires like started to like um and ha um yeah started to like form um from like working in the making maker space over the summer and like being able to talk a lot to like college students um, yeah. that have like that focused in that that were like majoring in civil engineering mechanical right. engineering and things like that so we were tasked to like make a robot but like out of mouse um, out of like a mouse trap a few spoons and like like scraps yeah um, and that um 
that kind of like pivoted me to like want to wanting to like go more into mechanical engineering slash like engineering in general because like we were able to not only like go like use the machines to like um change the like simple like tools into like a like catapult but yeah. like we were able to like yeah through the using of this these machines like i i've like got like fond about like just like working in maker spaces and just thinking about that um and yeah. that like kind of like is what drove me to want to like do engineering more more one moment uh it's just like every time i came into that maker space smelling like wood like <laughs> um as it was just like getting like shaved by yeah. the sander um, gotcha that like always like reminds me of like my love for i guess like building things and stuff. So yeah, my counsel, my counselor uh, guided me towards this program. Okay. Um, I think my, I, I didn't really, I think I wanted before the program, I, I wanted to do something over the summer to be able to like just learn something new um, and didn't really like think about like, I didn't really think about STEM the way I thought about it. Like yeah. for the next like years, the, in, in the future so I like just um yeah my counselor uh showed me this program and I thought it would be cool to like try engineering um and see see how it like um yeah see how it went um and yeah from from those experiences I evolutionized who I am who I've become and who I am now yeah that that's a good point and what would you say you mentioned like it it changed the way you looked at stem right like what what do you mean by that uh like before like i didn't really know much about stem like okay only knew about like math and like science from like classes and yeah. and so but i didn't really know much about like the career path that it could be like gotcha. the career paths that like lie in STEM and like uh, specializing in certain things within it and just thought like if you knew math then you'd be able to like do like a lot of things but I didn't know like what the doing part of that statement what meant until like I got to the program. I get the feeling that not a lot of high schools offer students the opportunities to get like hands-on experience mm -hmm. and at least for me um the same with you right it's revolutionizing because you see so much in the textbook and then you're like this is pretty boring in the sense that you just see like the equipment they use or like what what type of formulas or chemicals but you never really get that hands-on experience so I guess like a, a huge thing right you would probably um like what would you say to a high school student in that case where they're in the same boat as you in the sense that, you know, they want to get that hands on or they just want to try it for the heck of it to see if they like it. Like, what, what do you recommend to them? Um, so I re really recommend just like I, I think before RPI, I like watched a lot of videos on just like building like random things. Like so myth I like busters. Yeah, like Mythbusters or oh, shoot, like sorry. things like um, I, I, I forget like the but yeah, Myth Mythbusters were was like one of the videos that like kind of drove me into like really getting that interest before like going to RPI. Um, so I guess my my tips would be like to like try to like use like media like you YouTube or to try to like find um, ways to like just go out of your get out of the box that you're in and to like just research more about the things that you like because like after after you you, you might not know like that uh that you like the the these specific like paths um yeah. and like like before before i like was watching youtube videos about like using wood to build like um i guess furniture or things like that um like I didn't really I didn't really know what I wanted to do and so like I find research a lot to like really help like focus my like mindset on a lot of things yeah. in the present and by by the time you're like done with it you'll be like you'll be fulfilled because 
you've like researched and you know more about like the specific areas um yeah. that you didn't know before you started the research and those like yeah the the um, the things you g- gather out of the research also um may help you in the future um yeah. and so my main tip for that is like to try to find ways to um research more about the things that you that you like have an interest in and if you yeah. don't particularly have an interest in but you also do like yeah you don't have an interest in it but you also want to like just learn more like learning more doesn't really hurt uh, it doesn't hurt to like learn more because yeah you can use it later to like learn more about the specific subjects in general um and so mites um was a program that i and my my counselor like found that um she 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 showed me it and i was like the moment i saw it i was like yes i'm going to apply it's a program at mit that uh focuses on teaching um subjects that uh like mit level subjects to gotcha like high school rising high school seniors um and like not only do you get the subjects and you, you get to learn more about like calculus or biology or biochemistry or like physics but yeah. you're able to like have a group of students all over the country and outside of the country to like learn with and to like make a make a community with um and so I think I guess mites is like mites along with preface uh really changed uh the the way I looked at um like my education in general and the way I looked at like my path um like now Th- that's what really changed me because I limited myself a lot um per, um even during the preface program but like mites allowed for me to like really go out of my um com- com- um get out of my comfort zone yeah. and to like try out n- more new things uh, socially and academically um and so with that I was able to like do 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 a lot um yeah and I- I'm glad you mentioned like the socially part because you mentioned it was like a a program where I brought students like all across the country and at some points that can be intimidating because i also did a, a research program my junior year at cornell and it was intimidating at me at first simply because it was like my first time out of state and like participating and kind of seeing at least for me it was like kind of seeing where i was or where i was in terms of other students across the country in the sense of like how has my education thus far been able to impact like the way i can perhaps participate in classes or how much i know like how would you say was that uh going into my would you say that at first it was intimidating because for some students um it, it is possible that they don't apply because of that intimidation factor like oh i don't really want to like do this program because x and x and so and so is like i don't know it's like out of my comfort zone I, yeah i definitely felt that uh felt in, like it was intimidating specifically in the academic side for me cuz i didn't really know much about any of the um subjects that they were uh teaching um or or like in the in in the beginning it was like really hard for me to like um guess feel feel comfortable in that aspect gotcha. um and so i try to like if i feel intimidated in one aspect i try to find another like a uh, portion of me in which I'm like more comfortable until I was like a really social like person during you are. during my <laughs> yeah. yeah that's dope bro I yeah. think it's I think it's like yeah I think it's like continued on throughout MIT yeah <laughs> of course with me for sure you. bro yep. taekwondo legend everyone knows you <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah um but yeah I I felt really intimidated and in, uh, academically and so um I like went to i just started talking to to people and that's like a hard thing to like say i guess yeah and to really um like visualize and try to like do because it's like really hard to like talk to somebody you haven't like met before like yeah. for like 
um, or like haven't don't have the trust with. But I guess be, being able to talk to them for me was able to uh, allowed for me to like build trust and a lot for me to like know that um, they were here to help and that the teachers and the, the counselors like their jobs were to like assist and to like help aid in the transition um the hard transition of like just um the summer and so like like it's a hard tip to say like yeah. talk to people um but like if you're unable to find a uh uh avenue or uh, a path to to go during um during these like summer programs i recommend like definitely trying to find like um, a friend or trying to find or even talking to your friends at high school about what you're doing um because that also like really eases a lot of the detention and a lot of the intimidation factor uh, ease a lot of the factors for me um and so yeah definitely finding an outlet to 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 speak to and an outlet to be able to like voice your um voice your stresses and anxiety yeah. like helped me a lot um for for my in particular that's good and would you say like the program like fostered this environment because at least in science i think one of the cool things is like working in in projects and and team projects right so would you say like this, you know, this communication and the fact that, you, you know, we're able to talk to people, do you think that was like facilitated by being in a program that was oriented to science or was it something that happened just like after class or um, after, you know, after the work is done? So it was, it was facilitated by like, well, not, not, uh, I guess it was just like all of, we all knew that we were trying to get like something like out of the experience yeah and we all like were driven to like make each other like or help each other get to that like level in which we be able to like be comfortable with each other and yeah. um like it was more of like a family dynamic i think um like we we took that dynamic and put it into like our groups and our science and our like um, teams for like the electives that we were in and ju the classes that we were in. So I guess it was a di uh, just the program itself being like uh, a program to like, and like not only like enhance our like science knowledge, but to like um, increase our like network and to like make it a bit more, um, make make us a bit more comfortable with like meeting new people and meeting new experience uh people who have different experiences and things like that um and the program itself did really well in um uh, with like doing that and like i still like talk to all my my friends uh cool. to this day and we we like still like have a, a huge bond um and yeah i i think the program itself was the it wasn't necessarily like a, after class we didn't like we started to talk it was like it like first day the first day coming in we were Just like clicked. starting to talk and clicked that's dope and how would you say that um this program impacted the way you approach like whether it's mechanical engineering or a specific field like how enriching was it and how were you able to grow in a sense in terms of you know that you you mentioned that it it you know, RPI and then post RPA, like your, your view of science and, and STEM kind of, you know, was changed. Go more into like what I learned at RPI, um, specifically with the engineering class that I took. Um, and it was more specific with like the process of engineering design. Um, and I, I like learned more courses on top of it. Like I learned calculus, um i learned physics for the first time and was able to like go more into biology um and like these subjects were like like i was able to like like based off of my experience at rpi like okay have a 
I, I guess it was a bit better for me because I like knew what to take out of them um, yeah. based off of like just being able to have a program beforehand. But a lot of um, I, I don't know how it would be like if I didn't have the program before like mites to like yeah. really go into like engineering. But nevertheless, mites like really impacted me because um, it um, changed like it yeah I, as i said before like allowed for me to like go out of my out of yeah. the box a bit more um and that allowed for me to like really focus on like the things to make to make me a better person and things to allow for me to um like be comfortable with learning new things and um and and things like that but yeah, I think it's interesting though because when I went into Bytes, I wanted to be a mechanical engineer, and then Bytes <laughs> like drove me to want to be an aerospace engineer, like from just from like this uh, tour of the uh, Aero Astro Lab at MIT. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was dope, huh? Yeah, it was like really dope. Like okay. the the wind tunnel. Yeah. Um, they have a wind tunnel. It's like so so cool, and they showed me a, an engine of an old World War Two fighter jet. I was like, I want to build that. Yeah, and that was like, like what kind of like drove me to want to do um, aerospace engineering, and I kind of like, like was on that boat until like um, IEP of MI, uh, IEP of freshman year, which is like a January term for like MIT students to like do anything creatively yeah. or go out in the world, world and learn, yeah. travel the world too. Um, and I changed my mind to uh, course 11 and I think one of the main things that changed my mind and allowed for me to like really think more about what I wanted to like get out of, of MIT and out of like my education in general was mites being able to like allow for me to get into that spot to really think about like my past and the, my formulation and the, the fact that I've like, um, yeah, the things that I've learned in the past and, things that like have allowed for me to continue to uh structure myself yeah. and to like really use that to um drive my future um and so like i changed my major from course 16 um aerospace to urban studies and planning now um yeah. because i wanted to like impact society um based off of like my my past and impact the that like we yeah, just impact the way the way society runs and plan urban studies and planning is a perfect avenue into that um and I, I didn't really see myself like do that in like aerospace engineering i think um like the the divide between passion and divide between like having to like l um like trying to build yourself yeah um, but like also kind of like the small connection that it has allows allowed for me to like change uh, my major and go into course 11. Um, but I, yeah, I don't know if I answered your question. Like, no, nah, nah, you did. Into like a, no, a it's home. fine. I mean, <laughs> that's pretty sick because if you think about it, at least the way I see it, right, you started off mechanical engineering and then you went, you went to aerospace. So, I mean, it was kind of like going from a general field to a more like niche because, you know, aerospace though applies some of the stuff in mechanical engineering, but then you go to like urban planning course 11. And then it's like, you know, what the heck, like the connections there. But I think one of the, the things you mentioned is like that foundation and the, um, at least in STEM, would you feel that the way you were able to structure yourself and participating in MITES and, you know, RPI in terms of these classes that you took, helped you navigate and kind of be able to switch without feeling like lost right because yeah for a high school student they're probably you know they have to take the, the same classes the, the four years but that's something that that science offers or how would you describe it in the sense that what you learned in, in terms of class how it helped you structure whether it's like your personal life or the way you looked into new fields when you started like trying out for example like urban planning uh, course 11. Yeah, there are a lot of connections between like sciences uh, and I found it like really easy to like change um yeah based off of like the foundations that I've like the, the things that I've learned um, okay like and like it's easy 
it might not seem like it's easy to change between like physics and biology, but there are like a lot of connections within that. What I feel like is interesting about science in general is that like STEM is really like, like every, every STEM is a community as well. It's like kind of a network too. Yeah. And like you can like really make any connections that you want to make uh, as long as you're able to like have the like um yeah have 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 like interest and passions within those two th those multiple like uh, areas of the network and so like i found it easy to like change my major because like i was able to not only connect a lot of things about uh engineering and just like leadership and things like that um with mechanical engineering and like aerospace with like just jets and thinking about like the way like they're commercialized but using those two things to like kind of see myself within planning which is more of a general scope of a lot of um like what aer aerospace engineers like do um yeah. but a bit more uh a bit more like governmental slash like like you're you're kind of making the structures to allow for these engineers to like uh continue to make projects like like um the 777 or like other other passenger jets and planes um and so yeah i was able to like really take if you're able to take like a small part of what made you like decide to do um to like really go into stem and carry that with you um then you'll you'll be able to like really connect anything that you want yeah uh, that's a good analogy there and transitioning from like aerospace to urban planning um what are some of the skills so i'm not really that familiar either with like urban planning what would you say are some of the perhaps the foundations that are similar and what are the things that are very niche about urban planning uh, so aerospace is, I I think it's vastly different in that you're more specific, specifically focusing on like uh, jets and focusing on rockets and things related to um, just like air, air, astro and space, uh, yeah. as it says in its name. Yeah. Um, and like, like you're more specifically using physics and using a lot of the um, mechanical engineering as well electrical engineering to um yeah. to like really focus on tr um like specific projects like um like yeah as i said like building a, a passenger jet with boeing or airbus or um working with lockheed martin to uh create a defensive system or to, to go to space like or like spacex and things like that yeah um, and i guess what like really what I brought out of that was the focus on like transportation and transportation is still a huge, it's a small part in aerospace engineering. Like the, with the passenger jets, you have to think about transportation and think about like what people like, yeah, how people like feel comfortable, like going into like a plane to like get to another location. Like yeah. that's like 3000 miles away or something like that. You know? <laughs> It just got uh, worse now with coronavirus. Like, yeah, it it did get worse. <laughs> yeah, Cause yeah like now they have to. The engineers probably have to think about more more things in designing new planes, right? That we previously were kind of overlooked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like more space and uh things like things like that. Yeah, but yeah, I, yeah. I use that that like kind of lens, which is like kind of more general in aerospace engineering, and try to like apply it to like planning and a lot of what planning does is uh is trying to make society and life uh, a bit more comfortable for people to live in slash um it's a a structure it's it's a it's a yeah it's 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 actually kind of interesting because it's a a way to structure like society to to make it a bit more like like comfortable uh, and so um using what i like using like it it's coincidental but using a lot of the transportation um things that i've learned in aerospace engineering and just uh learning more about like uh the how how 
like how many um like for example the max capacity of airports slash the max capacity of planes and things like that and like those like skills like those foundational skills allowed for me to like really go more into um like thinking more about like how a city runs and yeah. thinking more about how like airports run and how people are able to like um subsidize certain things to allow for these systems to continue to run and so there really isn't a lot of like strong connections between like 16 and 11 like um but like i was able to like uh think about what i wanted to like really go more into thanks to a lot of the um things that i like started to uh see and started to learn in in course 16 yeah um that's that's unique like uh i would have not been able to think about those connections personally and it's cool and interesting at the same time like how at least you as a person you're you're able to make those connections and see in transition and i mean bro you're in new york so like that's huge man like yeah. new york it's like every time i go there it's there there's instead of building to the sides or building up it's like eventually there's going to be a city and like 50 floors it's going to be another I can't city even see the sky yeah 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 facts bro <laughs> <laughs> facts so do you see like do you see yourself um like urban planning perhaps going back to new york in the sense of, of seeing ha- ways of perhaps co- contributing to like where you live and, and stuff like that or you're right now you're just kind of in for the ride and seeing what, what wherever it goes i'm really in for the ride right now but That's i cool. really hope that i come back to be able to like impact um, like the way the where I live because there are like a lot of problems that continue to plague um, the 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 neighborhood specifically governmental problems that need to be fixed like yeah. gentrification um, things related to um, just the upkeeping of a lot of transportation networks in New York as That's well true. as the upkeeping of a, a, a lot of buildings um, and so like hopefully um, if I have when I have a lot of ex- expertise and knowledge i'll be able to come back to new york it's such a big city so it's yeah. so hard to like really change overnight and yeah it for sure will take a, like a long process to to do so and so um i think i might uh really i might go more into trying to learn more about the the ways institutions continue to um run and how they've like the foundations of these institutions to find ways to, to make them more equitable in the future um and yeah i wouldn't be at this point without like the programs that i that i did like in stem um because like honestly like um it made me like more like comfortable to or it made me more aware of like the um, things that i was missing and yeah. the, the the types of things i need to like uh, learn to be able to like survive in in the world our preface r p i is a two week program uh for rising juniors and rising seniors um and you're basically um for the first week or so or i guess both weeks for both weeks you're able to like live in rpi and you're able to like um like do certain like events with the other people around you it's about like 70 other participants oh wow um, big. so it's yeah it's really <laughs> big um and the food rpi is really good so hey. i really i i give that a check <laughs> it's better than cafeteria high school food for sure it's so it's so much better over like the bre- breakfast they had um uh cinnamon apple like pancakes and like that sounds bomb it like slap i'm slapped yeah it, it truly slapped it was <laughs> it was truly like i that that made it made my it made my day every time i had it I, um, I think that's underrated at these um programs for high school students it's so i don't know if, if it's a tactic yeah because when i went to the one in cornell mm. the food was it was freaking fantastic Corn, cornell's food is and yeah, so I don't know if it's like they yeah. they do that to kind of tell the high school students like yeah come to our school or if it's just like genuinely that good like mm-hmm. throughout the whole year, but that's something like 
I mean, if you just want to come for the food, right? If you don't like like science, at least you get some good food Eat for like food. two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> a quote. If you don't like science, <laughs> eat the food. Yeah, just eat the food at these programs. I mean, I don't know if anyone <laughs> listening to this perhaps relates to that, but I, I agree with that, man. And um, I know you didn't touch on, on this point, but like personally, you know, we know each other and stuff. You mentioned like, and there's an article about you. So this is kind of going back to um, something that I, I looked, you know, before I even met you at MIT, I think, I don't know if it was you who shared the link or, or a friend of mine on Facebook. It's like, yeah. Yeah. um, and it's, it's inspiring because um, in your case, right? Like it, growing up wasn't easy. It wasn't like normal, right? It was a bit difficult um, because like a lot of living situations that I like went through, like uh, family lived in like a shelter for a a considerable amount of time. Um, We had to move a lot um, based off of like finances and just like family situation. Um, And so it was like really difficult for me to like live, I guess, and think about like just life like i was living to survive literally like middle school from uh so like being able to like i guess that's like also what kind of drove me to like want to do stem because stem like like look it uh, before it was like more of like oh stem there's like a lot of money in it and i'll be able to like get my family like get my family out of like this like place yeah um and and yeah, there are a lot. There's a lot of money in STEM, specifically computer science. Bro, I'm saying to do computer science. Like I'm telling, <laughs> just learn, just learn Python, C plus plus, like that. And I I think by the time they watch this interview, um, I'll have a video dropped on computer science. I mean, I'm not selling out. I'm not trying to diss I'm not any selling computer. out either. Yeah, I'm not trying to diss any computer. I'm, tr- I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help y'all, <laughs> bro. But facts, like, there's money in computer science. <laughs> big bucks yeah yeah but that's Um, dope so yeah continue but yeah i looked at it that way but when i started to like go more into it i found a real passion in like um just building and and just like thinking about the ways systems like run um and so that's that's what like really drove me into doing stem um but yeah i like my, I, I use a lot of my like past and the, I guess the survival skills that I've learned to try to like push forward my drive and push forward my, um, yeah, my, my agenda as a, as a human. Yes. Cause it's like, that's all you can really do. You can like for history in general, like you have to learn. It's more about like learning about the past to be able to like impact your future. And that's what I've been like living my life as like trying to like uh, use the things that I've learned in the past slash things that I can avoid um, that's true. and to like go in the future and try to uh, replicate the things that continue to work and um, like fix the things that I wasn't able to like do well in the past. Yeah. And I mean, personally, I, I see that too, right? Like uh, Taekwondo, right? That's like one of your, you want your things, right? You want to want to go to the Olympics, right? Yep, yep. 2028 or 2032. 2032, <laughs> yep. so. Or t- 2036. I, I, I'm, as, as long as I get there, I'm, I'm just really, I'm really pushing forward that. I, I only started like junior year too, like of high school. And I started yeah. fighting like this, this past year, last year. Yeah. So. Yeah. But I, I really, it, as long as you have the drive, as long as you love what you're doing and you can see yourself like uh really like you can't see yourself without it uh you can you can uh you can achieve it honestly okay so my my new mantra is stay delicious and that's like stay delicious I guess I, I, I can say that, like, stay delicious, like, all delicious right, right. being the definition of anything in your life that you, like, really want to, uh, like, anything that you, in your life that makes you happy or, 
anything that like propels your like drive and propels you as a person. Um, so I guess stay delicious.